Let me show you how to set custom rules inside of Cursor. Now rules are just your way of telling Cursor how you want to communicate with your models. You can give it specific instructions or information about your project so that it can better suit your needs. To create any rules, we can go up here in the upper right and click on this cog to open the Cursor settings. Now from here on the left-hand side, we have this rules tab and once we click it, we're now in the rules section. The first part here is called memories and this is using AI to learn how you're talking with the model. So instead of having to tell the model manually every single time how you want it to interact with you, this will actually learn from your chat history and start to make a list of the common preferences that you like when you're talking to your model. This sounds pretty useful, but by default, it's disabled if you're in privacy mode. You have to enable it, and then once you enable it, you'll have this whole list of memories that you can review or remove if you don't like them. And this list will continue to grow as you use the agent inside a cursor. Now, if we scroll down here, we have user rules, and these are the cursor-wide rules. It's regarding Regardless of whatever project you have, every single chat that you open inside a cursor will utilize these rules. And all it's doing is it's taking whatever text you have in the rule and adding it to your chat for the first initial prompt so that every subsequent prompt abides by those particular sets of rules. To add a rule, we can either click this add rule button or if it's empty at the time, you can click on the add rule under the list. So this is where we set regardless of the project, what rules we want to have for the models. For instance, I could say use fewer comments because I don't want the whole code base to be bloated with a bunch of comments. A lot of models are very eager about putting in comments. So I'm going to say use fewer comments. So next I'm going to say be concise in your response because the models tend to get extremely wordy and I, all I want is like the specifics about how things are happening or what code it changed. So this is an example of changing the style of responses that you get back from the models. So now you can add as many different rules that you want, but once you're done, you can click on done and it will automatically save those as user rules. So now anytime cursor interacts with the agent, it will utilize those user rules. It'll always send those in prior to the prompt so that the model is aware of your preferences. Now, if you scroll down again, I mentioned it earlier, but we have user rules and we also have project rules. As the name implies, project rules will only be associated with the project that you have open. And now this is where we can do some really interesting things. Not only could we add similar or the same rules that we have in the user rules, but just specific to our project, but we could also reference certain documentation so that the AI always has a reference that it can look back to in case it gets mixed up or starts hallucinating or gets over eager. It always has like certain documentation that it will keep inside its memory and never go outside of the bounds of. Currently I'm in this project called Compressify. All it does is it takes an image and compresses it to a smaller size without losing quality, but I don't really have any good documentation here other than this readme, which might not have everything that I want inside of it. So I created this app to help out with that. It's called vibecodedocs.dev and you can check it out in the description. You can create a free account and from here you can create one project and get documentation about that project that you can then use in the cursor rules so that your AI will never get off track. So once you sign in, you can create a new project. And from here, all you have to do is describe your project, whatever you want to have happen. This is a really good use case for brand new projects, although you can also tailor it to projects that already exist. It's really easy to work with. All you do is you describe your project as little or as much as you want. Here I say it's a web app that compresses images to smaller sizes without losing quality, because that's what this project does. And then you generate your questions. Once it generates the questions, you just go through and answer each one of these so that we can build and generate these documents later. It asks questions that you should probably be thinking about with each one of your projects. For instance, who is your primary target audience? And then it asks specific questions about your project. So it's saying beyond basic compression, what are some absolute must have features for the initial MVP, whether we want to use JPEG or PNG? stuff like this. Also, if you don't have an answer for something, you can also kind of force it to create its own answer. All you have to do is say, make your own answer for this, or you can use the AI suggestion button here and it will give you suggestions based off of what it thinks is the best for this scenario. Once you've finished answering your questions, you can go to the name. And once you've named your project, we can hit generate documents. Once it's complete, you get a nice preview of each one of the documents that it created, and you can then download each one of them. You can either download them each individually 
individually, or you can download them all at once mashed into one markdown file. Now I downloaded them all into one markdown file and you can see it here, it's just this one big file. And what we're going to do is we're gonna reference this thing. So underneath project rules, we're gonna click on add rule. Now up here, we need to give it a name. So I'll name it docs and then hit enter. Now under rule type, we need to select how we want it to be applied to our chats. Manual means you have to mention it inside of the chat in order for the AI to pick it up. Always means that it will always be added to each one of your chats that you send in. Auto attached means it will only be attached to certain file types. And agent requested for the description, you need to describe how the agent might use this and so that it will choose when to bring in this particular rule. I want these documents to be referenced every time we use this chat because I want it to stay on track and not hallucinate or not get too eager when it starts creating code because it could start creating features that you never asked for. So I'm gonna select the rule type to always and then I'm going to give this rule a brief command. I'm saying reference the following files to stay on track with the project alignments. And then if you have multiple files, you can do what I'm about to do multiple times. Or if you just have one file, you can just reference it this way. So to reference a file, we put the at symbol and then we can name whatever the file is called. So my particular markdown file is called compressify all documentation. And then I'll click on this. And now it has that as a reference. So then all I need to do is hit control S to save and I can close out of this and and now we have this rule added to our project rules. So I'm gonna ask it a very pointed question by saying, tell me what the monetization strategy is for this project. It should directly read this file, but whenever we're doing any sort of feature requests, it will also be reading the file, but I wanna show you that it does it automatically with this Claude for Sonnet thinking model. We'll be able to see that it inputs the docs that we want inside of the request. So now if I hit enter, we can start to see its thinking and generating process. And it thought for one second, you can see it read the compressify all documentation.md. It knows exactly to do that because we added it as a rule. And then it does some more reading of it to try to figure out exactly where we say about the monetization strategy. And inside of those questions on vibecodedocs.dev, I did say that I wanted it to be free for anybody doing 10 megabytes. But once you want to go up to 100 megabytes with the addition of batch processing, you have to pay for it. Now something a little less direct, but we'll still be able to see that it reads that file, I'm going to say, let's add a dark mode and a light mode feature. So this has nothing to do with the rule itself, but it should still use that rule. So now I'll hit enter again. It's generating, it's thinking, it's trying to plan what it wants to do. And of course you'll notice it read the compressify all documentation.md. So regardless, if you ask it something specific about the rule that you created versus if you just do something random, it will always use that rule and make sure that it abides by it every time that it responds. And of course, if you do want to use the vibecodedocs.dev, the link is in the description and you can start with a free account. You can create one project and get your documentation as you want it. And if you do like the app and want to upgrade to one of the subscription plans, it does directly help out the channel so that I can make more videos just like this. And with that, that is how you can set up and create rules inside of Cursor so that your AI models can follow it perfectly.